Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as I discuss relatively new developments from discussions between the AMA, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and the FAA that allows us in some of our flying fields to fly our drones and RC model aircraft up to 1,200 feet AGL. Let's get to it. As the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, is getting more and more involved with model aviation, more rules and regulations are coming to affect our flying. Uh, one of them is the maximum altitude for RC model airplanes and drones is currently 400 feet above ground level. In this video, I'll discuss that 400 foot altitude. I'll tie in the FAA regulations for general aviation full-scale aircraft that um, you, sh you see the background where that 400 foot altitude came from for RC model aircraft. I'll discuss a little bit about the airspace structure because 98% of our model flying is in what is called class G or uncontrolled airspace. I'll show what that looks like with the um, other types of controlled airspace, class G and where all that is in the um, airspace system. I'll then show you how, through the use of VFR sectional charts, you can see where Class G airspace is in the United States, and a quite interesting FAA facilities map that will show your RC model airplane club and where the Class G airspace is located, just for background information. You don't have to worry about it too much. But the important thing out that grows out of this discussion is the AMA has engagement with the U.S. government to include the FAA to try to get some relief for our flying from these regulations. What came out at the, um, in the middle of April, 2025, is a, um, make sure I get the, the term right, a certificate of waiver from the FAA that allows us in what is called AMA fixed sites to fly up to the limits of Class G airspace, which is 700 feet AGL or 1200 feet above ground level, depending where your club is located. So this is significant because now we have uh, fixed sites that are recognized by the FAA with higher altitudes tied into that with FREA's FAA recognized identific identific identification areas and so forth. And I'll, I'll walk you all through that. And then finally, a very quick discussion of before you fly, how you can get permission to fly into controlled airspace. As a reminder, if you'd like to jump ahead anywhere in this video, just go to the timeline and chapters are listed in the timeline. First, as I mentioned, the maximum altitude for drones and RC model aircraft is 400 feet AGL, which is above ground level. Let's take a look at where that is stated on the FAA's website. This is the FAA website. It's really a pretty good, a very good website, just a ton of information. So the splash page is here. Let's go to the top, over to the top right to drones. And there's a pull down menu there. We'll just go down to the recreational flyers and model community-based organizations. This is our information for recreational flyers. It talks what is a recreational flight. You're not doing it for any compensation. And here are the rules for recreational flyers. Only for your personal enjoyment. Uh, you be, follow the guidelines of a community-based uh, organization. Uh, you've got to keep your drone within visual sight of the observer. Give weight out of the aircraft. In controlled airspace, you fly at the minimum, minimum altitude assigned, and you're at or below 400 feet AGL in Class G uncontrolled airspace. And we'll talk a lot more detail on the importance of Class G airspace. Now, we saw where the drones are limited to 400 feet above ground level. Where did that come from? We can get insight to that by looking at the federal aviation regulations. There are various parts of the FAA regulations, four parts that will be um, of relevance to us as pilots is part 107, commercial drone operations, part 91, which is private and non-commercial uh, airplane full-scale operations, think Cessnas and Piper Cubs, part 135, which is um, unscheduled or rather on-demand air taxi operations, jets with less than 30 feet, uh, 30 seats, no public schedule, then finally part 121, which are your commercial airline carriers, uh, United Airlines, Delta, and so forth. So part 91, is private and non-commercial flying. It is the least restrictive regulations because they want the owners of their Cessnas to have as much freedom as possible to fly. And in uh, FA, FAR, Federal Aviation Regulation 91.119, which is minimum safe altitudes, let's take a look at how the FAA directs uh, private uh, general aviation minimum altitudes and how that led to the 400-foot altitude for our drones. 
So part 91 is general aviation, essentially recreational full-scale flying. We'll take a look at the Code of Federal Regulations for Part 91, flight rules. These are the rules that general aviation has to fly by, uh, what you have to do for a pre-flight, when to wear seatbelts, when pilots have to be at their uh, control stations, uh, logging flight time, just a whole bunch of things that govern general aviation flight uh, right away and so forth. It also has the altitude, 91.119, minimum safe altitude. So let's take a little bit closer look at this. Anywhere, you've got to be at a high enough altitude to execute a safe landing. Congested areas are as there, but other than congested areas, see that we have to be 500 feet above the ground, except over open water 500 feet away. So 500 feet is generally considered a, the lowest altitude to have safe, normal gener general aviation flights. In a chart, you can see the non-congested aircraft at 500 feet, models at 400 feet, except for takeoff and landing. That's where the 400 feet al altitude comes in for RC monoplanes. Next, let's take a look at the airspace structure, or the national airspace structure over the United States. It's divided by letters. It goes from uh, class A airspace to class G. A is the most restrictive. You have to be under an instrument flight plan. G is uncontrolled airspace. The FAA exercises no control authority in class G airspace. That's important for us as drone and RC model airplane uh, flyers because 98% of our flying is in class G airspace. So let's just take a look at the different types of airspace, where class G comes out, showing that there's different altitudes of class G, just so we have a rough understanding of that for our follow-on discussion. So here are the airspace categories. Again, um, class A is the most controlled. You have to be on an instrument flight plan. B and C are and D are towered airports. E is controlled airspace that connect the B, C, and D airspace. The G is uncontrolled. 98% of our flying will be in um, uncontrolled airspace. So here we see class A, class B is like Atlanta Airport, C and D are busy towered airfields. The blue is class E. We can't go there because it's controlled um, airspace unless we have an exception. The pink is class G that goes up to 700 feet and 1,200 feet. That is where we fly our models and that's where we get the higher altitudes in. Now that we know what class G airspace is and the overall national airspace structure, how do we find out where that is? The answer is the FAA publishes these uh, remarkable charts called um, VFR or Visual Flight Rules sectional charts. It covers the entire United States. They're updated periodically, and they are essentially a work of art. They have all sorts of information on there, whether a field is towered, non-towered, the length of the field, frequencies, um, airspace, delineation, specialist airspace, just uh, obstacles, all sorts of information. Now, I. Don't expect any RC modeler flying on their Sunday afternoon or field to be able to go through a sectional chart, but I just want to show they exist. And let's show, uh, let me show you how the Class G airspace is demonstrated on that. Then we'll take a look at the FAA, um, FAA UAS facilities map, where they actually bring up the sectional. And on the same map, there's other bits of information like where clubs are located for FAA recognized identification areas and for the altitudes that we'll come to shortly. Quick look at a sectional. You can see class E to the right. That shaded line is at 700 feet inside that circle, outside of it for the vast majority of the, of the nation, especially the east. Class E starts at 1,200 feet above ground level. Next, and it's important, on April 11th, 2025, the AMA was issued, the Academy of Model Aeronautics from the FAA, a certificate of waiver that does two things. It discusses for the first time what they call AMA fixed sites. These are recognized flying sites of the Academy of Model Aeronautics. The FAA understands it's there. There's a 44 page list of all of these fixed sites. And they can, the FAA can do things like establish FRIAs or, in the case of this video, on a case-by-case -case basis, altitudes for flying our models up to 700 feet above AGL and 1,200 feet AGL. So if you're at an AMA site, not your, not your backyard, and you see what the altitude is, the 700 and 1,200 feet depends on the uh, height of the Class G airspace above that field. You can see it varies over the country. You can fly during daylight hours up to this altitude. So let's take a look at the waiver and what all that means. Then finally, the all-important document that lists by club uh, what your maximum altitude is to fly. 
This is the Academy of Model Aeronautics website. Just a lot of good information. You can see the, the, the front page. So let's go up and we'll look at media and resources. We'll click on that and then we will go to um, the media room and AMA blogs. Then we'll go one more to the left. We'll pull down, the, the various blogs are here, but we'll go to the top, pull that down to the AMA government advocacy. We can see there are two updates to the Class G airspace, one on April 15th that was the initial where we could fly um, up to 700 feet, but there was an authorization document, the waiver, certificate of waiver that we'll go through in a minute, but this was the initial um, authorization that allowed us to fly above 400 feet, up to 700 feet, and 1,200 feet, depending on the floor of the Class A airspace. Now, this is the actual certificate of waiver itself. It's at the bottom of that um, AMA blog post. It's issued by the Academy of Model Aeronautics and it allows for fixed sites per the AMA to have these higher flights up to 700 feet and 1,200 feet depending where the field is located. We could read it here, it's undermanned operations up to the maximum altitude of seven or 1,200 feet. That is right from the FAA to go above 400 feet. And then some other particulars uh, for controlled airspace, near tower and airfields and things of that nature. Now, we're going to go to the other one, frequently asked questions on this uh, waiver. This came out on April 23rd, 2025. Uh, does it apply only to my site? Uh, there's copies for all authorized sites. It's about 44 pages long. We'll look at it here in a moment. And um, they're granted to the AMA field locations. And it will tell you what the base of the overlying Class E airspace is, either 700 feet or 1,200 feet. Doesn't count your house. Um, there's some things on contests. It's just for your AMA field. So here is the document itself. We go down to the authorized list. It's 44 pages long, and it, um, on the, it just go, there's a lot of, of sites here. If we go back up to the top, there's a flying site, the latitude and longitude, the address, the city, and the state, and the altitude you're allowed to go up to. I fly in Georgia. Let's take a look at the hilltop flyers in Georgia. And you need to look, have to look at it carefully. But there is the hilltop flyers, the lat long, the address is correct. And our field is good up to 1,200 feet. As a reminder, when we fly our models, we have to be in uh, uncontrolled airspace. So we just go out to fly. There are There is an ability to fly into controlled airspace. If you're flying in tr controlled airspace, you're probably 2% of the model aviation flying. You know who you are. But there are various apps under the Before You Fly program where you can figure out where the controlled airspace is and how you can get permission to fly in that controlled airspace. It's a separate discussion. But there, just want to let you know, flying in uncontrolled airspace, Class G, you just go up and fly. Controlled airspace, you need prior permission from the FAA. Thank you for joining me in this video. It's good news, the engagement of the AMA and the FAA. We have recognition of fixed sites, and we have altitudes at those fixed sites up to 700 feet, 1,200 feet above ground level. That's a pretty big uh, win for negotiation and building trust and contact with the FAA as we advance into an ever more regulated and complex airspace environment for RC model aircraft. Thank you.